Hey y'all, and welcome to the 1.0 introduction video. We played through all of alpha and beta and can move on to what was the full release of Minecraft to the public. So sit back and relax as we go through the timeline of the 1.0 update. The first version of what is known as the full release section of Minecraft is the second part of the adventure update. That sentence is a little confusing. It was dropped at the Minecon 2011 event on November 18th, 2011. After two and a half years of development, the game was officially launched. It was initially named Beta 1.9, but Mojang opted to release it under Minecraft 1.0.0. Being that this was the full release, a lot of blocks were added along with quite a few changes. We now have brewing stands, cauldrons, dragon eggs, which generate after killing the new ender dragon, in stone, mycelium, nether bricks, nether brick fences, and stairs, nether wart. Some of the new items include blaze powder, blaze rods, eye of enders, fermented spider eyes, gas tears, bottles, glistering melons, gold nuggets, magma cream, nine new music discs, nether wart, potions, spider eyes, and splash potions. The 1.0.0 new mobs would include mushrooms, chicks, calves, piglets, lambs, blazes, snow golems, and finally the new villagers. Like I said, we see a lot of new things in our Minecraft worlds here. We see the new biomes, frozen ocean, frozen river, ice mountains, ice plains, mushroom island, and the end, which is technically a whole new dimension. Obviously, with the addition of the nether brick blocks, that means we now have the new nether fortress structure. An interesting fact about this update is that they added the infamous end poem at this point. We see the long monologue between the player and the universe after exiting the end through the portal. We also get some new achievements. Diamonds, we need to go deeper, return to cinder, into fire, local brewery, the end, the end, enchanter, overkill, and librarian were all added. Hardcore mode is also introduced with this update, which locks the difficulty on hard and forces the users to delete the world's saved data upon death. And this was before they had added Totems of Undying, so it was like the true form of hardcore. A few smaller changes appear like the texture of iron, diamond, and gold blocks, bookshelves, bricks, and brick slabs get another retexture, doors make new sounds, the moon and sun now rise in the east and set in the west. After the 1.0.0 release, there was one more release before 1.2, which only included some bug fixes. So we've pretty much covered everything new to the game in this version. Because this intro was so sweet and simple, I figured we could go ahead and split this video into two sections, the intro and the gameplay. So let's switch gears and look at our own world. So here we are in our survival world. And in the top left, you can see we are in 1.0.0. And I just wanted to show you guys some of the things I've noticed so far. Over here in our unobtainable chests, we have the lily pad that has been updated and it's just a normal texture, which is what I thought was gonna happen. So this is another reason that I haven't really put these out into the correct spots yet, because I know some of the early ones will end up updating and being regular items. I think I mentioned this in a previous video, but in 1.0.0, there are no unobtainables. So we are going to just work on really making some cool builds, making the 1.0 section a lot more detailed than the previous ones. So if we head over to the area that we will be working on, we can start planning out and discussing what my plan is. So I started by completely flattening out this area here and kind of marking out everything. So this is the edge of 1.0 to 1.1. And then this is the exact middle of the circle. So this is where the base would be if we used the same pattern, which I kind of want to try and do. I think what my plan is, is because this is the adventure update that we will make this section like its own adventure. So you'll kind of start out and it'll be like a tame forest. And then maybe as you go deeper, the forest becomes more dense. So here is the entrance to the area. This will have water in it, obviously, and then 
lily pads probably and then I think I'm gonna do some vines and leaves to make this look a little bit more overgrown but now I'm gonna go through and add some custom terrain on these two sides and once you walk through this I want it to be where you kind of can't see outside of this area so it really looks like you're in a jungle or just somewhere where all you see is trees and mountains and waterfalls and stuff like that but I want it to be very naturey. and then I think either there's gonna be a hill here up to the house or a tree here and we're gonna have a tree house for this section's base um, but I'm gonna start by like I said making some terrain like little hills here and there and then after that, I think I'm going to make some custom trees and add them in. And we'll just kind of keep building on top of it until it's dense enough that you can't see outside of the section. So I added some vines and a little bit of texture to our arc here. And then decided I want this to be a little pond. We'll put some lily pads in here to help with the little bridge across. And then I think we're going to do a birch tree. Either birch or just planks, I'm not sure which one yet. But a birch tree here, kind of short and fat. And then obviously we have our little hills and I'm going to be making custom trees on the hills and bushes and stuff to help hide the rest of the other sections. But that's just a little update. Here's the custom trees and they're a little sloppy, but <laughs> I can't put stairs upside down. Uh, I can do slabs. I could do fencing, but the fencing doesn't look that good. We got spruce, we got oak, and then on this side we have spruce and oak. And these are just like the bigger trees to do like a lot of the background filling up. And then obviously throughout here I'll have some more trees, bushes, and um, I think I might even add some big mushrooms to add some color too. And then this I think we're gonna do in, I'm pretty sure I want to do it in um, actual birch wood so not the planks but the birch wood because obviously we don't have um different color planks yet we only have the oak colored plank so i'm like 99 percent sure that the mushrooms can grow into full large mushrooms at this point and the updates i'm just gonna put one here so maybe i can't maybe i lied let's try it out here Oh no, there we go. So I might have to make those custom as well. Actually, I might just leave these down here. That doesn't look too bad. I don't know, I don't know. I might tweak it out, might change it up a little bit, but here's where we're at. So here we have a nice nighttime shot of everything pretty much put in place as far as I can um, do with this version. And I am really pleasantly surprised with how well all of this kind of goes together with as bright as some of these blocks are compared to others. Yeah, I really like the way it looks so far. Uh, I think, like I said, I'm pretty much done with the sides here. Obviously we have the back that we need to do and then this tree that we need to do. So that's what I'm gonna work on next is building up this tree, giving it some branches, and this will be our quote-unquote mega base where all of our storage will be obviously going to be levels to it uh we're going to make it into a tree house here and then i think one the last thing that i'll do with the sides here is i'm thinking a river will run through right here kind of go down and then go around the base of the tree and then back out this way. I just think that would be a nice detail. So now that we've got the tree all made here with its leaves and its vines, I'm gonna start working on what I mentioned earlier and do a little river that goes down the mountain right here and around the base of the tree. And then that's probably where we'll end this episode. And in the next one, I'll probably work more on the background of this section. And then after that, I think we might just go ahead and move on to 1.1 because like I said, there are no unobtainables in this version. So I'm gonna start work on that and then catch up with you guys once I finish. Alrighty guys, so here we have everything that I wanna get done in this episode. So we have our archway and these vines are a little bit excessive. So every now and then I just walk through and kind of chop them down a little bit. But then you walk through here and of course you have our giant tree. And then I made this pathway out of 
basically as many blocks as I could. <laughs> so it's just like a stony pathway kind of leading you through to the tree. I think I've hidden the beta section pretty well. With all the uh, foliage here and the big trees, you kind of ignore it when you come through here. And I'm hoping obviously the same effect happens on the right side. So you kind of follow this path back towards the tree. Uh, I finished up this river here that goes around the base of the tree. It does go all the way around even though you can't see. And then I don't know if this is un un unobtainable but I don't think you can do it in later versions but I put mushrooms on these logs here. And then we've got pressure plates you know I wish I could put stone buttons on the ground as pebbles, but you can only put them on the sides of walls. So then, of course, you go in here. And I think I might do a museum for 1.0 blocks underneath here, but that's a later thing. You go up, and the first floor has a little storage room that contains basic building blocks. And then... If you follow the ladder up further, you will enter the storage room with the more important things like all of my ores and then random miscellaneous drops that are kind of important. And that is all I have so far for 1.0. I'm thinking back here, we're gonna do a big mountainscape, kind of like a very rocky hill. And then of course, we've got to put our 1.0 above to match the beta and alpha signifiers. So that'll probably go directly above the tree, but I wanna thank you guys so much for watching. I also wanna say lots of appreciation for all the interaction and views on the last video. Uh, unexpected, but I really appreciate you guys, and I will catch you in the next one. Goodbye.